in the Levian campaign series. This is actually volume four called Plantagenet, Cousins War for England, 1459 to 1485. The, design, the game is designed by Francisco Gradai. We've done several interviews with Francisco, great, great guy. And the game is published by GMT Games. As you can see, this is some beautiful cover art. Uh, it's a little bit different and unique, but it definitely is cool. Love to see it and think that this game um, hopefully will be amazing as well as good looking. Uh, this is in GMT's big three inch box. This is very sturdy. You could probably stand on this uh, and not bend it or break it. But on the back of the board, you can see the beautiful board. Uh, it's going to be a big mounted map board here. This is during the uh, Wars of the Roses, right? Yeah, the full Wars of the Roses you can play it as, or you can just do scenarios. Um, but definitely cool. As you can see up here, you see some examples. These are the command cards, and these are the capability cards. Very cool system. Uh, uses a lot of, of wooden pieces, so it's kind of a Euro hybrid, but definitely a war game that focuses on supply, logistics, and uh, command. So very cool game system. We have played ne Nevsky, uh, Almoravid, and we have kicked around Inferno. We need to play it more, but now we have another one to get on the table. So if you know anything about this series, it seems like every other week somebody is announcing a new game. There was recently the Levian Campaign Ancient series announced, and it has Epipoli, which is the uh, siege of, of uh, Sardinia, or Sicily, I'm sorry, there in Syracuse. So it looks very cool. Very much looking forward to this. Let's go ahead and get the box open. Uh, it's very tight on there. There's a lot of stuff packed full to the gills with uh, cardboard and paper. The first thing you see here is there is a rule book and in, specific, in GMT fashion, a background book with probably also somewhat of a playbook in it, whether it talks about the Arts of War cards uh, or the historical situation itself, it also has an example of play listed there. So let's go ahead and look at the rule book. Very, uh, very thick rule book, 32 pages, as you can see here on the back of the rule book. There are, there's basically an indices or an index here on the last two pages, so you can look up any of the items that you're having questions about. These are the different scenarios listed here. There are a bunch of scenarios, it looks like, probably five or six different scenarios. Um, you can play the full campaign game, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Plantagenets go to war. Probably the entire campaign itself, the Wars of the Roses. Nope, I'm sorry. One to three here is the Wars of the Roses. Um, boy, there's a bunch of scenarios. This one's going to... You could play this forever and never get through all of it. I like that, frankly. I think that's very, very cool. Oh, here's a cool scenario guide. Kind of shows you how each of the scenarios, what areas they focus on. So that scenario 1B, Towton, just focuses on that one uh, levy box, whereas scenario 1C, Orange, focuses on three. Uh, scenario three focuses on about seven, six, five, so five, so... Uh, here's the rules, supply, commands, how do you end a campaign. I have found that I love the Levy and Campaign series, and I think Alexander feels the same as me. I'm not sure I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm not sure I understand how best to manipulate the game engine and its parts to do what I need to do. But you have to remember, you have to pay, feed, uh, and supply your armies, or they will leave the field and some of the volumes, I'm not sure about this volume, but have uh, treachery cards in them. Inferno does. And uh, very, very, a cool 
kind of new new factor but there are lord mats so you can see here's a lord mat lord retinue it shows his vassals and his troops kind of cool talks about influence how to use supply and then once again to that that background book this is going to be for you history buffs who just want to learn and understand better talks about the campaigns and their different histories the rebellions my kingdom for a horse. I know that's a phrase that we have all heard. And then it goes into the Lord and Vassal histories, the Lancastrians, uh, the Plantagenets. Boy, you're going to be able to read and learn a lot. And then just the cards, where they came from and what was the basis for it. Plus, there's an example of play. Uh, once again, examples of play start at the beginning on page five. Let's turn to that. So here you, you get kind of a quick example of play that shows you how to do things, which is good. Always helps to be shown how to play a game. You'll notice here is a sticker sheet. So some of the Lord cylinders, you will have to place or affix these sticker sheets or stickers to them to identify them by color, but also by their Lord symbol. Here is uh, a couple of screens. Very beautiful. Wow, these are probably the best yet. Although they've all had their own uh, flair to them. This is Plantagenet. I'm sorry, no, that, that's the name of the game. So this is, oh, look at the different Lord symbols inside. Very, very cool. Just a really nice touch. You don't need it to play the game necessarily, but it does help to hide some of your elements. So that's very, very cool. Next up are the player aids. There are two of them, plus there's a special rules page that my guess has helped you remember things that are a bit obscure. And then here is the succession of lords when they come out, etc. Very, very handy. Uh, but let's look at these command sheets. So here it talks about the various actions that you can do, marching, supply, sale, forage, tax, and parlay. Talks about the procedure, very, very helpful, and the requirements. So you have to have cards, or you have to have provender, or plunder, or be in a friendly local, locale, etc. Here are influence points, how you use them. And then here are the various forces and their abilities. Always very cool. So you'll notice, like these are retinue and vassals. So you'll notice they have an armor value. So they get to roll a die in defense, and they're going to block hits on a roll of one to four. You definitely don't want to lose these units at the top, but you definitely want to use them because they're going to soak up hits. Uh, Men-at-arms also have an armor value. Obviously not as good. Mercenaries and handgunners do as well. But longbowmen and militia are unarmored, so they're going to take hits a little easier than others. Here it talks about where you can levy and supply and tax and pillage, um, what you can get out of the different types of locales. Very, very cool. Here's a battle chart that helps you remember how to do that. A couple of special rules at the bottom, and then a general sequence of play. Very nice, uh, very nicely put together, and uh, is going to make that game much simpler to play. And, and I don't want to... I don't want to scare you off. These games are not for the faint of heart, but they are very doable. We have played, like I said, two of them, and I feel like we picked it up after a while and figured it out. It just takes some time. Like any good game, it's going to take some time. Let's go ahead and move this board down so you can get that entire thing in the screen. Very nice looking board, frankly. One of the best looking ones. I love the color. Obviously, England is very lush. Uh, lots of rain, things grow well, so the green. Uh, very crowded, lots of little villages and cities and towns here listed. Um, you have your levy calendar at the top. That's going to tell you how long your lords are going to stay, what year they're going to be available. You have your victory points here along the outer edge. You have a good uh, explanation of the, high, the difference between highways, roads, and paths what they look at like. Port symbols are very clear. This is where lo various lords are mustered and start when they come on the board. Their, sim their crests are put there. Um, Scotland is up there. Very, very nicely done. 
and it looks frankly it looks great there are two counter sheets a majority of these are um, control markers plunder markers uh, moved and fought feeding Th these are for the levy camp uh, the, the levy calendar and then these are all of the the, the things that you need coin provender a cart you need ships to get across water and rivers uh you have coin as well i already mentioned that but then here there are depleted markers which when you forage or plunder you put out those so that nobody else can get uh get those from you here are different counters for different units yeah they look great there's definitely a specific feel with these uh, counters in their graphical layout and the way they look. And I think it's very, very sharp. I think they look great. Uh, I mentioned a bunch of wood, right? There are bags of wood. Here are these Lord cylinders. And you can see they are red, black, I'm sorry, red and white. So Plantagenet and uh, House of York or Lancaster, sorry. White and red. That's where you're going to put those stickers that I showed you earlier. You're going to fix those on that. And then here are your various units. Let's go back to that unit just so I get this correct. The Here on the chart, the steel colored are men at arms. The green are longbowmen. The brown are militia. The black are mercenaries. And the burgundy are your hand gunners. Uh, the burgundy, I think, are in, they are in this bag. You can see there's one there and then there's the black. So let's get a handful of those out. Once again, these are wooden. They're little wooden bits. So this game is very well produced and looks great. So steel, green, brown, representing the different force types. Very neat. You're going to put those on your Lord mats. They give you a, a bunch of baggies here. You get a bunch of six-sided dice. Uh, let's look at the Lord mats real quick. It looks like I'm going to have, a, have to open those up. This is the battle board that's very helpful when you when you do get into battles. Uh, I'm going to have to open this up, and I'm not sure how that's going to happen. These are wrapped pretty darn tight. I should have been more prepared. I apologize. So, yeah, I'm opening these. I got them open. I got, or at least I got the, the wrap torn into. Got to throw that on the ground. I'll pick it up later or my wife's going to kill me. Uh, but these are some of the different Lord mats. Um, oh, and you know what? It's interesting. They're generic. Maybe that's because they change so often and they don't want to print individual ones. But some of the other volumes, they had individual ones. But you're going to place a Lord card on there so that you understand who's there. And then these are where the assets are held. Those coin, plunder, uh, provender, ships, and your carts. So there's a whole bunch of those. Once again, they're generic, when in some of the other volumes, they were, uh, they were specific. Let's go ahead and look at, these are the Arts of War cards. Oh, I hit the, sorry about that. I was, obviously, I'm on the struggle bus here this morning. I should have opened this and ripped those out. But Arts of War cards, beautiful presentation. They look so very good. This is a really well-made game, as you would expect from GMT. But what are the Arts of War cards? So they have some kind of an event on the top, like a flank attack or a leeward battle line, escape ship, Jack Cade. And then on the bottom, these are kind of, uh, what do you call them, capabilities. So you can play this out, and typically you play it under the board, and you remember, oh, I get this ability. Each battle at a friendly stronghold, this lord adds two men at arms and one longbowman. Remove them after the battle. That's a very good capability. So yeah, all different types of capabilities. Uh, looks like some of them are specific to the lords that can use them or the sides that can use them. There's a whole bunch of those. Very cool Arts of War cards. Very much like those. You've got a couple decks of Lord cards. And remember, let's take this Lord mat as an example. This is Lord York. You're going to put Lord York there. And you're going to track that on that board. But you've got all different types here. 
I am not an English historian. I am not well versed on the Wars of the Roses, so I'm not going to even attempt to talk about or pontificate on those because I frankly will end up uh, embarrassing myself. You guys know the history. You guys can look up the history. I love the history, but that's why part of why I play these games. You've got the command cards. The very cool thing about Levy and Campaign is these are linked to Lords, and you're going to put these out, and you're going to kind of blindly uh, create your draw deck. You're going to put those down, and then you're going to draw it out, and that Lord, when you pull the card off the top of the deck, that Lord, you can activate that turn. You also have pass cards that you have to include in sometime in your uh, in your plays. So you've got to be planning for that. There are other Arts of War and Command cards for the other side. I just didn't open those. So we'll put those here just so you can get a good look at those. Really love that insert, but I'm going to take that out. It's uh, going to be crowded once I put a counter tray in there. So I really like the art, but I will be uh, getting rid of that. So there you have it. Plantagenet. Boy, what a great looking game. Um, very much excited about this one. I, I love, I do love this Levy and Campaign series. I think it's very fascinating, very interesting, and frankly, a very cool uh, and well-designed system. As you would expect, not only from GMT Games, but also from Volko, uh, who started the series. Now, Francisco is the designer of this one. I did an interview on the blog about Plantagenet. You can go ahead and read that if you want more information. But there you have it, a look at Plantagenet from GMT Games, Volume 4 in the Levy and Campaign series. And if you don't know, Levy and Campaign has about eight other, I think three or four other announced volumes, but then they probably have a dozen or more in design and development. So uh, look forward to this, playing this one, getting it out, trying to play through it and learn and grow and understand the system better. I know Alexander loves playing these games too, so we'll see how it goes. But thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.